today we're doing the step down part two. Now this is taking into account all the stages from regression right through to stepping down a BOSU and it's one of my favorites for knee rehab, glute rehab, knee pain. So let's start off with a few fundamentals. With the step down, remember it's like a one-legged squat, but what we're trying to do is control the eccentric phase of stepping down off the box but not putting weight through the back leg. So we're going to keep weight on the front leg and then stepping back up. Now, when you start off this exercise, some people have knee pain or they're just out of surgery or they've got a little bit of weakness through the VMO, a lot of weakness through the glutes. So we have to try and change the exercise to accommodate that. First things first, what you've got to make sure of whenever you're doing the step down is your knee, the middle of your knee, needs to be over the middle of your foot. Now, the middle of your foot is between your second and third toe, so that's on the outside of your big toe. So the best thing to think about is when you're doing a step down, think about the knee on the outside of your big toe. All right, so you should always be able to see your big toe. Now, the other thing, so that's, that's keeping that in line, and, and that'll teach you not to roll your knee in, because if your knee's rolling in, you'll see it cross over your big toe, so you always gotta try and keep it out. And sometimes it rolls in as a matter of, is it my lateral rotators that are weak here? Is it my glutes that are weak here? It's not necessarily a weak VMO that rolls it in. It's usually up the top here in the hip, okay? So knee alignment's important. The hip alignment's really important as well. So when you start off, you've got to have your hips as in the ASIS on either side, the level of the pelvis. It's got to be level at least. I'd rather it be a little bit higher on the opposite side, so then you really know that you're using your glute on this side, your glute med and min. Now they're your walking muscles. So if you imagine I'm walking or I'm going upstairs or I'm running, that position there, I need these muscles to keep my hip high so I can actually clear my leg through the ground. That's why we've got them, all right? So when I'm walking, if I don't, I'll, I'll drop my hip and I'll scuff my foot. So it's a good way to think about, can I keep my pelvis high to clear my leg through the ground? And this position needs to be held the entire time when I'm going through that step down, that reverse squat. So if I go down here and I drop, you'll see my leg comes in a little bit. So if you're using a mirror in front of you, you should always see your legs parallel and not crash in that way or let that leg drop. Because you then, if that happens, you know your leg has dropped, your pelvis is dropping down. So what I mean is, if I'm here, you don't want to be dropping that way when I go into a squat. And you see this a lot when people are doing step ups or step downs, one legged squats, they're dropping their pelvis. Now if you drop your pelvis, okay, you're not doing any work on your glute, and then the femur is going to internally rotate or it's going to drop into valgus, which is going to give you that knee pain, which is what we're trying to avoid in the first place. So very important that you keep that pelvis level, right, throughout the entire movement. Now, one thing that can make you drop your pelvis is if you try and reach for the ground. Okay, because some people run out of range in the hip, so they'll squat down, they'll run out of range here, and then they'll just drop. All right, so you've got to make sure that you actually bend at the hip to do the movement, and sometimes they can't do it because they've got weakness there. So let's start off with the first level, like the regression level. And there's two things in the regression level. One is a toe tap step down and one is a regression step down. Now the toe tap step down is going into a position where you're actually sitting back, but you're not letting your knees come forward. Okay, so if, if you look at, if you come in here, when you have a look at this, so when I stand on one leg, when I sit down to the position, see how my knee stays relatively where it is? I'm not letting my knee come forward like a normal step down. I'm just keeping it there and sitting backwards. Now from there, I've got to try and hold that static position, okay? Tap my foot on the back, tap it on the front, on the heel, tap it on the back. So I'm not actually moving on my weight-bearing leg. I'm trying to hold this isometric contraction of my knee, my quad here, my hammy, my glute, keeping my pelvis level, and just moving back and forward. And it's actually quite hard, quite taxing, for that weight bearing side. Okay, so that's the first thing you do. So you shouldn't get any knee pain with that because you're not moving your knee, all right? And you're training your VMO to get a bit of static control. You're training a lot of glute static control and that builds that base for you to be able to go, okay, I can get down there and I can load and weight bear. So the second level, well, level one, part two, is the regression where you go to the same position but you move into the position and then you move away. Okay, so you step down, 
but I'm not letting that knee come forward. So I'm moving more of the hips, I'm doing more glute work than I am knee work. Now, of course, your glutes are going to get stronger than your knee at this point, but you have to because if you've got knee pain, you can't let that knee go forward. So it's better to build up the hip, get that stronger, while, and get the knee slowly stronger, and while that recovers and gets better, then you can move into stage two, which is going from the step down regression like that to actually letting that knee come forward so I'm in more of a normal squat position. So if you imagine like if I was in a squat, okay, I'm doing the same thing, but I'm just doing it on one leg. All right? And you can call it a one leg of squat if you like, but we call it a step down because that's the movement we're training is that eccentric control and then coming back up. So we're not actually stepping up, okay? we're stepping down and then returning. All right? And just letting that knee come forward. Now, you can choose how much your that knee comes forward. You can, if you've got a little bit of pain, let it come forward a little bit more. So you sit below the pain, and as you get better and that improves, you can get that knee going forward and forward and forward until it's the right angles like you would do in a squat. All right? Now, in level three, all you need to work on is putting some sort of resistance to the movement of the knee. I don't mean loading the body, so there's no point putting weights on until you've worked on the lateral component of it. So getting a band like this and putting it around, well, obviously the front knee, but it's the outside of your knee. Okay, so it's the outside of your knee. And you're gonna stand on that leg and then try and balance. And again, I've got to try and keep my knee on the outside of my toe, all right? And then the band is trying to pull me in. I'm trying to fight it, so I need to, that'll make me work hard here. And this challenges me laterally. So when I go into step down, okay, I'm trying to resist the band. And that gives me more work rate up here, more control work that I need to do. So it's about the control of the knee now that I've got the strength up to handle the squat, so I've got the strength up before, and now I'm going to work on my control with a better resistance load. All right? And then you'll see on level four, we go to a BOSU. I mean, you can use a wobble board or a BOSU, it doesn't really matter. And this is really working on a lot of motor control now. So we build our strength and a bit of control there, and then we focus just on control at the end stage. Right? Because you, know, you can do all the squats you like to get the strength up, higher and higher, but you've still got to work on control for the best rehab in your knee. So balancing on that, and the same thing, knee on the outside of your toe, stepping down, tapping the floor, coming back up. But notice, I'm not putting weight through my back leg. I'm keeping the weight on the BOSU, and I'm trying to keep it level. Doesn't matter if it moves a little bit, as long as my knee stays relatively stable, it doesn't roll in, okay? And same with my hip. Again, keeping that hip nice and level, not letting it dip down, and coming back up. And that's it.